from Wingate University and WUTV. This is Wingate Today. Hello and welcome to Wingate Today. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Wingate University became ground zero in the political world in October, if only for a day. Former Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan came to campus to appear with U.S. Senate hopeful Tom Tillis. The two held a campaign rally in the rotunda of the Bat Center on October 21st. Media outlets from across the country were here, and the story was carried nationwide. The Tom Tillis K. Hagen race is the most expensive Senate race in the country. Brian Rudolph, a teacher from nearby Forest Hills High School, brought his honors class to the rally. For the nearly 20 students, it was a rare opportunity to see politics up close. Ryan was Mitt Romney's running mate, partisan though it was. To be able to have the opportunity to, uh, to you know, see somebody who's famous, a famous politician, very well known, I think means a lot to them that I have that opportunity, but also to see too that politics is real and that politics applies to us all and that, you know, politicians don't live in some far off distant planet, that they're actually approachable people. After the event ended, several of Rudolph's students posed for pictures with Ryan and Tillis. Congressman Richard Hudson also attended. For Wingate student Zachary Allman, a member of the College Republicans, it was extra special. He got to appear with the candidates and lead the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I was kind of nervous to tell you the truth. Paul Ryan, he's uh, somebody I really look up to, as well as Richard and Tom Tillis. Uh, they've been great leaders here in North Carolina. I really admire the work they've done. Paul Ryan is not the only famous person to visit Wingate's campus. There have been many others over the years, people like the Dalai Lama, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Secretaries of State Henry Kissinger and Madeleine Albright, and presidential candidate Bob Dole, just to name a few. The list is long, and not just politicians and religious figures. Author and humorist Garrison Keillor has been here for a visit. They got pictures of his red shoes. And so has business magnate and financier T. Boone Pickens. Still in politics, voters got the chance to hear directly from the candidates running for office at a debate sponsored by the League of Women Voters, the Home News, and WUTV. The candidates for North Carolina House of Representatives, District 55, Union County Sheriff's Office, and Union County School Board all appeared at a forum held in the Bat Center. This was the first debate where the candidates from the contested races locally have been all together. We talked um, at the conclusion of bringing the elected candidates back in six months to say, what have you done? You said you were going to do this. Where are you now? And, and how are you engaging with your citizens? So absolutely, the more we can make this a part of daily life and make political activism a part of people's value system, the better our communities can become. Candidates fielded questions from Dr. Joseph Ellis, political science professor, and Luann Williams, editor of The Home News, the weekly community newspaper in Marshville and Wingate. The debate was televised and broadcast by WUTV. Organizers say they plan to do more events like this in the future. In late October, there was a whiteout on campus. No, not an early snow, another event, homecoming. It's a tradition around here. On the Thursday night before homecoming Saturday, students go wild with the Charmin. And they did this year. Longtime faculty member Carolyn Gaddy wearing a crown. No one's exactly sure how it got started, but it is always an unusual sight for alums to see when they return to campus. And thousands returned to Wingate to celebrate homecoming 2014. The Saturday morning of homecoming kicked off with the annual 5K and Fun Walk, which attracted more than 325 runners. A project by the School of Sports Sciences, students plan it, organize it, and execute it. They learn everything about managing the event from start to finish. This is the 13th year, a learning experience and a fundraiser for the school to support initiatives and projects which benefit students. At the 30th Annual Alumni Breakfast in Laverne Banquet Hall, this university's highest recognition of achievement by a university friend. Wingate University President Jerry McGee was named an honorary alum. McGee, president since 1992, got his bachelor's degree at East Carolina. But for his nearly 23 years of service to Wingate, he was awarded the Honorary Alumni Award for Achievement. It has been the greatest joy of my life to be your president, and I'm really honored to be an alum. Thank McGee will step down as chief next May. There were nearly 25 separate events tied to Homecoming Weekend. One of the most visual was the Homecoming Parade that moved along Camden Promenade in the heart of campus. There was music, signs and floats, and cheers. For Miller Edwards, age eight, a couple highlights. I liked it. Um, I'm glad that I got to see my sister. 
and get all that candy. His sister Megan was in the parade. Dad Benny Edwards says the promenade is a special spot. She, we were walking actually right down this sidewalk right here and she turned to her mother and said, I can see myself on this campus. And so that's uh, when she made her decision that Winget was the place for her. Fifteen student groups participated in the homecoming parade. Alpha Z Delta took first place in the parade float competition, followed by Sigma 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 and Chi Omega. Learning the basics of America's most popular sport. Obviously the field is 100 yards long from goal line to goal line. Each end zone is 10 yards long. What a large part of the world calls football, we know as soccer in the States. American football, a lot of the world may not understand. So just prior to homecoming, some international students got a lesson about the game played on the gridiron. Head football coach Joe Reich taught them some of the basics, and then the students got to put their skills to the test, kicking field goals. Cheerleaders taught the group the Wingate fight song. American Football 101 has been an annual event hosted by the Office of International Programs. For the last 10 years, Wingate football players have partnered with Levine Children's Hospital in Charlotte in a visit that puts smiles on people's faces. Recently, about a dozen players began the day by serenading patients with a rendition of Let It Go from the Disney movie Frozen, taped in the Ryan Seacrest radio studio inside the hospital. Let it go, let it go, turn away, slam the door. Kristen Johnson joined the players for the visit, so how did the patients react to seeing these guys? Jeff, you noted that this put smiles on people's faces, but it wasn't just for the patients. As you're about to hear, the players say these visits make a lasting impression. The 11th floor of Levine Children's Hospital is a far cry from the gridiron. Here, the tough exteriors of football players take a back seat to the compassion they show to patients. How you doing today, Gerard? It's day four of Gerard Waite's hospital stay. The 14-year-old is no stranger to the sterile environment, the IV fluids, and the steady ding of a machine that stands inches from his bedside. Sickle cell can cause like extreme pain in the body when when your blood cells like get clogged up in the arteries and, and veins in your body. But for a moment, the football players take the focus off the pain and Wade welcomes the relief. Nothing exciting going on in the hospital, so it was just, I was happy to see them all come in and say hello to me and um, we brightened up my day. A quick pose for a picture and then the players move on to another room. It just makes me feel grateful, really grateful for everything that I have and the opportunity that I have to play football because I know a lot of these kids, they, they don't have that opportunity. You know, our guys love it. I, I'm never short of volunteers for this trip. It's something they look forward to every year and uh, it's just a fun day. Offensive coordinator Mike Long started bringing players to visit Levine Children's Hospital in 2004. He said they've only missed one year since that time. Every year, you know, we try to bring a, a good mix of guys, freshmen, all the way up to seniors and try to give everybody an opportunity to come during their career at Wingate and you know it's something I think they'll take with them when they graduate here and just always be able to look back with on fondness. Long admits it's hard to come here and not appreciate the gifts you've been given and thinks it probably pushes players to give more when they are on the field. It makes me feel good it makes me you know that when I can go to the hospital and, and, and see everyone and put smiles on their faces put a smile on my face. Brandon Ellington, who you just heard from, says he can think of no better way to give back than doing something like this. As for Gerard Wade, he tells me that, Jeff, he's hoping to get out of the hospital before his 15th birthday. We hope he can. Thanks, Kristen. You talk about giving back, Kristen. Well, service can take many forms, from picking up trash to painting. Eleven students and two staff members from Wingate spent their fall break in a remote part of the North Carolina mountains at Glory Ridge. Founded in 1974, the 28-acre camp on the French Broad River in Madison County is used as both a retreat and a place for volunteers to stay when they visit the area to do service work. They slept in hammocks, spent four days there in the inaugural Alternative Fall Break, a new program the university started this year. Kids were the focus of this event, the annual Fall Carnival, held on the Tuesday before Halloween. You can, Wingate Student Service Organization, invited kids in the community to come in and play games, paint pumpkins, and get their faces painted. Staff members got in on the fun. There was candy, of course, an alternative to trick-or-treat. Organizers say it's just another way the university shows its commitment to the community. About 500 people attended this free event. A fall event that keeps getting bigger and bigger is the Ballantine Festival in South Charlotte. One of the main courses of the one-day festival is the chili cook-off. For the second year in a row, a team from Wingate University Ballantyne competed in the cook-off. And let me tell you, the competition got heated. People are coming and bringing us other, other 
bowls from other places and asking us to throw them away. <laughs> and they're saying that ours is the best and that they voted for us. This woman told us she's had three bowls. I've tried every vendor out here, but Wingate University was the best chili today. In addition to the chili cook-off, there was a pumpkin carving contest, games for the kids, and music. But more than fun, Wingate Valentine says it's a good time to do some guerrilla marketing and share about the programs available at the Valentine campus. By the way, the Valentine team took second place in the chili cook-off, right behind the Charlotte Fire Department. It doesn't happen very often, the next time is August 2017, but in mid-October, there was a partial solar eclipse, and the Chemistry and Physics Department organized a public viewing of the stellar phenomenon. They set up solar telescopes with special filters to be able to look at the sun safely, and handed out special safety glasses, like what welders use. We try them on, and this is what we saw. Part of the sun appears cut off as the moon treks between the Earth and the sun. This public viewing comes with a warning and an encouragement from Wingate's new astronomy professor. The sun's wonderful thing in the solar system. Never ever look at the sun without protective equipment. That's why we're having this event, so people can actually look at it. But at night, look at everything up. Always look up. People are looking down too often. Have phones, they have TV. Get outside, look up. Before the partial eclipse watching, Dr. Thompson gave a 30-minute primer on the key players of Earth, Moon, and Sun, and how orbits, moon phases, and more affect what we see in the sky. He called his solar eclipse lecture, When the Moon is Between a Rock and a Hot Place. Now a unique story about some students gathering from all majors and all walks of life under a common banner. We bring in Dustin Etheridge, media content specialist in the Office of Marketing and Communications. And you actually found this story by browsing one of Wingate's social media accounts? That's right, Jeff. Earlier this month, I was monitoring our Instagram account and came across a picture that jumped out at me. It was a shot of several dozen students gathered together, not that uncommon on our campus, but what these students were doing, having their very own version of church on a Sunday night that struck me. And they were gathered together in, of all places, a campus apartment. Church. It's often a place characterized by pews and offering plates, hymnals and programs, stained glass windows, and the obvious choice, the Bible. But here at Wingate, there's a group of students bringing new life to the old idea of church. But we just call it for short PPP. We're gonna pray, we're gonna praise, and we're gonna eat some pancakes. Prayer, praise, and pancakes. It's become a weekly gathering in Byram 911, and it's quickly caught on, if for nothing else, the free food. Yes, if you feed them, they will come. These students gathered together for a time of worship, a time of reflection, to him who alone does great wonders, calls our hearts to love other people, a time of prayer, and a time of fellowship. <laughs> The early church came together and broke bread, and so we break pancakes. Student organizers Hunter Carter and Rachel Newmister tell me it's the perfect recipe for preparing for the week that lies ahead. You get so busy in college, social life and academics, um, and sleep if you're lucky, <laughs> and so it's good to have a time to slow down and remember what's important. I think it closes the day, um, God's day, well, just like to be with friends and to worship God. And while they might be the ones who initiated this gathering of sorts, we all come together and remind ourselves that he's, he's the focus and we're not. I've seen the power of God. Um, I know what it is to know God and to, to share that with somebody and to invite them into knowing God in such an intimate way, their life will be changed. And make no mistake, while these students are happy to cook up some quiet time for reflection, life change is their ultimate goal. To kind of not just leave it at that, but to really foster a relationship through this community gathering. There's a real God who really loves you, and uh, you can really experience Him, and you can do that here. Make a friend and grab a pancake. <laughs> They actually started at the beginning of this school year off campus and moved into the apartment when they added the pancakes element to the equation. It's a lot of people in one small apartment. Any chance they'll outgrow it? Well, Jeff, you know, Hunter and Rachel tell me that's a real possibility for them, and it's one they're very excited about. All right, Dustin, thank you very much. A programming note now. Wingate University Choirs presents a concert you won't want to miss. It's called Out of Africa, 
and it features the Wingate University Singers, Chamber Choir, and Men's and Women's Choir. WUTV recorded the performance and is airing the program this month. Watch it at 9.30 p.m. here on WUTV. They started out as best friends, now they tour the country doing stand-up at comedy clubs and college campuses. Francis Callier and Angela V. Shelton are the comedy duo Frangela, for Francis and Angela. They brought their brand of craziness to Austin Auditorium in October. Yeah, so you walk up to you, you want to say hello, you say, hey, what's up, Kirsten? No, it's Kirsten. Oh, I'm sorry, Kirsten. No, Kirsten. Kirsten. Okay, that's what I'm saying, I'm saying Kirsten. No, you're saying Kirsten, Kirsten. it's Kirsten. Ki Kirsten, there's an umlaut on the F. The two women have appeared in dozens of TV shows and were featured on Oprah's funniest stand-ups in the country. Coming up on Wingate Today, he's been in public education for more than 20 years and is committed to improving teaching and learning. Meet Union County's Principal of the Year, a Wingate alum. Our alumni spotlight is next. And later, student athletes raising money for a worthy cause and receiving national attention for it. We'll be right back. Join our Facebook community, visit wingate.edu, scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the Facebook icon. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life. You can say a lot in 140 characters. Visit wingate.edu, scroll to the bottom, and click on the Twitter icon. Welcome back to Wingate Today. He says he's thankful to be in a place where he can make a difference, and he certainly is making a difference in the lives of young people. Wingate Today contributing reporter Brian Stevenson explains in our alumni spotlight. Brian? Jeff, there is no doubt that Wingate University makes a significant investment into public education and this alumni spotlight is part of that investment. Dr. Kevin Plew is the principal here at Forest Hills High School and recently he was named Union County's Principal of the Year. It's pretty common to see Dr. Kevin Plew in the hallways of Forest Hills High School. A lot of my staff will say they come by my office and they can never find me in my office and the reason is is because I really want to work hard to get out of my office and interact with kids, interact with staff in their environment. Dr. Plew worked his way through the Forest Hills Cluster, meaning he served as principal at Union Elementary, East Union Middle, and now Forest Hills High. I've worked with some of these families and some of these children for close to 10 years now, and that's, that makes my time here at Forest Hills very special. The time in the area has helped Plew develop relationships, which he feels is a strong key to being a successful educator in today's climate. Everything is much more personal what are your goals, what do you want? Whereas, you know, when I was a kid, we were taught, we were taught much more as groups, treated much more as groups of kids. So we, we literally are looking at each individual child having personal relationships, building those personal relationships with them to get to know what their goals and what their dreams are, and then trying to help personalize an educational program for them that's going to help them reach their goals. It must be working. This year, Dr. Plew was named Union County Principal of the Year. That means he is the top principal out of all 53 Union County public schools. And while he is proud of that accomplishment, he acknowledges that he couldn't have done it on his own. It's a reflection on what we're doing here as a group at Forest Hills, not as much as just me. So um, the support that I have from my administrative team, from the rest of the staff, the teachers here at Forest Hills, and you know, ultimately from the students and the work that they're doing on a daily basis to, to be the best they can be. He also credits the time he spent working on his doctorate 
at Wingate University's Matthews campus, now located in Ballantyne, for helping his professional development. And those Wingate ties didn't stop when he completed his doctorate. Obviously, Wingate's a mile and a half from Forest Hills High School, so we host a lot of student teachers here. Um, we get a lot of students who come over to do observations, education students do observations in classrooms to, for some of the requirements in their different courses. Um, I've got probably 20 people who have ties to Wingate, either graduates of Wingate or uh, ties to Wingate in other ways, um, teach there that are on my staff here at Forest Hills. Dr. Kevin Plew is very proud of the job that is being done to educate students in public schools. I'm not an apologist for public education. I think we're doing a better job now than we've ever done. I think it's uh, a better quality education that kids are coming out with. There's more opportunities for kids at the top and at the bottom to get the best education they can get and reach their fullest potential and go out in the world and be contributing citizens. Those relationships that Dr. Plew has developed here at Forest Hills High School and in the community are paying big dividends. Jeff? Brian Stevenson at Forest Hills High School, thank you very much. Student leaders at Wingate are embarking on a new endeavor to raise the bar on school pride. In October, they launched the Blue and Gold Friday Challenge and video campaign. We take Blue and Gold Fridays seriously and we want to challenge all of you to do the same. So while Student Government Association leaders, along with the university's marketing office, put together this video challenging faculty and staff to wear blue and gold on Fridays. The idea to ignite student interest in wearing Wingate colors on Friday as well. In the video campaign, academic departments challenge each other to produce a video and if they don't, they have to pay up, just like the ALS challenge. You have until next Thursday at noon to accept and produce a video or you owe us all t-shirts from the bookstore or K-cups for a year. The School of Sports Sciences took the challenge. How did they end their video? Go Bulldogs! Student leaders are hoping the videos will catch on. Wingate athletes are coming together to help make dreams come true for some special kids. Ryan Brown joins us now to explain. Jeff, Make-A-Wish grants the wish of a child diagnosed with a life-threatening medical condition in the United States. It's also the official philanthropy of Division II Athletics, and here at Wingate, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee has shown incredible commitment to the cause, raising money, and granting wishes each year. The annual dunk tank on the promenade kicked off Wish Week for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, which uses exciting fundraising events like this one to raise money year-round for Make-A-Wish. Yeah, this is one of our most exciting weeks of the year for our Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Michelle Cadigan is the advisor for the SAC and is proud of finishing first in the conference two years in a row and the national success as well. Last year we raised over $7,000 to contribute to Make-A-Wish. That amount raised put us number six in the nation amongst more than 300 Division II schools. The dunk tank is successful thanks to the volunteers who patiently wait on each pitch to take another plunge into the water. It's one of our biggest events. Um, we get a lot of the coaches out here and they can get their team members to come and donate to throw a ball. The uh, Student Advisory, Athletic Advisory Council did a great idea of dunk tank and was happy to volunteer 15 minutes of my time. You know, I guess being from Canada, the water wasn't uh, all that cold. Uh, kind of felt like middle of the summer, even though it's October 29th right now. Last year, the SAC hosted a wish reveal, inviting a family to a Wingate football game to be on the field, something Cadigan believes sparked a new drive into the student athletes. It set a different standard for them themselves as a group, and so, yes, they have taken it and run, and run with it, and, and I'm just really proud, and it's just great to be a part of it. So when you actually get to see the excitement on that kid's face and what it means to him and to his family, it just makes it that much more important when we're out here raising money because we know that that's what it's going to lead to, the happiness on that kid's face. Another big event held each spring is the date auction, where students from around campus are auctioned off for a dinner date an event that draws thousands of people and plenty of fun. Last year we packed Austin Auditorium and so there's a lot of excitement not just among our athletic department but um, among our campus community in general. So what is the lasting impression that Cadigan wants her athletes to take away from their selfless acts of kindness and hard work, making things possible for others? I hope that they'll realize the many blessings that each of us have and I hope that they'll take with it as they continue in their careers and with their families that, that they'll continue to give back to a cause that they feel is, is worthy as Make-A-Wish. 
The newest event this year for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee was the Krispy Kreme Run, started by the original location in Winston-Salem. The Wingate version was a run from Cuddy Arena to the Byron Business Building, down half a dozen donuts, and then run back. As great as the reason for the cause was, the end result was not a pretty sight, Jeff. Thanks, Ryan. The earthquake in Haiti four years ago forever changed a country that already was the poorest in the Western Hemisphere. A country that used to be able to feed itself now looks like this, mostly deforested. 20% of Haiti's children are malnourished. A woman from California set out to change that. Margaret Trost shared about her experience with an audience in Austin Auditorium in late October. Trost, a former TV producer and author of the book On That Day Everybody Ate, founded the What If Foundation. It provides funding for up to 7,500 meals a week to Haiti's children, offers educational scholarships, and supports a summer camp in Port-au-Prince. After the lecture, Trose shared with us what it boils down to. That meal right there is a miracle, the Haitians would say, and I would say too, that meal right there makes a huge difference in that girl's life in that day, and so therefore that meal is important. And um, yeah, that's what we want to be doing. Trost came to Haiti through her husband's sudden death in 1997 when she was widowed at the age of 34. She joined a volunteer mission and met a charismatic Catholic priest who shared with her about hunger in Haiti. This next woman speaks out about one of the darkest times in modern history. 92-year-old Susan Cyrnak Spatz spent two years in a German concentration camp in Poland during the Nazi reign of terror in Europe during World War II. She survived the Holocaust. 11 million people were killed, the largest genocide of the 20th century. Today, Cernak Spatz shares her experience with audiences so that time in history won't be forgotten. I want you to understand that I'm not teaching history. I'm teaching a universal effect in the world that unfortunately is still working today. Hatred and, and viciousness have not died. Cernak Spatz lives in Charlotte, a retired professor at UNC Charlotte. She spoke to eighth graders at East Union Middle School in October. WUU-TV recorded her remarks and will air a program, Holocaust Remembered, beginning November 10th at 7 p.m. here on Wingate University Television. Take a look at this. Wingate Class of 68 alumni John McCrimmon, Benny Weaver, and Paul Little were roommates during their time here. They posed for the picture on the left back in 1970 at Benny's wedding. Well, they planned an impromptu roommate reunion, and that happened on family weekend in September. And as you can see from the photo on the right, the three friends decided to recreate the iconic photo they posed for back in 1970. Benny Weaver told us after 44 years, their reunion at Wingate made it seem like they were just together yesterday. What an awesome feeling and a great photo. And that's our show for this time. As we leave you, one more look at the sights and sounds of the homecoming parade. I'm Jeff Atkinson. Thanks for watching.